I got rid of a bunch of negative motherfuckers that needed to be out of my life. Wow. It was about removing that toxic bullshit. Uh, yes. And I was on fire for uh, real. There was uh, no, you know, I, I felt myself and I was uh, like, I had a space for myself and nobody could tell tell me some shit that wasn't Sometimes right. Sometimes I like to get on here and I like to tell the real. Sometimes I get on here and because stuff happens, shit happens around me and they act like they don't see it and I see it. Then I found ways that I have to talk about it. So today, I'm fixing my Memorial Day dinner, which we wasn't supposed to be cooking today. But anywho, I'm fixing this, and I just got to thinking, like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? I am so over my dad's side of the family that I can't even see straight. It's not all of them, but it's majority. When you have family, family supposed to be there for you regardless. They're not supposed to turn their back on you. They're not supposed to not see you they're not supposed to think that this is okay for some reason my dad's family think that this shit is okay the way that they have treated us and because i have been questioning it now everybody in their feelings now everybody want to get mad now everybody want to feel some type of way well what about us what about how we feel what about how my side of the family feel I so look before like i go any further hi my name is monica and welcome back to my channel like comment and subscribe and today I am in here just to empty out, to empty out what the fuck has been going on in my brain. And I know that I'm using a little bit of foul language. I know this. You know what I'm saying? I know that, you know, the F-bomb is going to fall. Okay, because I'm a little pissed off about it. Because see, at the end of the day, like, comment, and subscribe. Hi, my name is Monica. And welcome back to this channel. Honey, this is a dumping. This is an aggressive dumping. This is an aggressive dumping because somebody needed to say something. And since it has to be me, get ready, babe, because it's going down today. Okay? So, what I have to do is I have to take y'all back. I'm going to take y'all back all the way to the day that I got the phone call that my dad was dying. See, regardless of what was going on, my dad kept in contact with us right after Monique had passed. He wanted somehow or another to try to build a relationship back with the three kids he had left. But at the end of the day, it was too late because we was already grown. We was already grown. We already had made up our minds about how we felt about him and how, he, how we felt about how he didn't raise us, how he wasn't in our lives, how he didn't help us. But nevertheless, that's still my dad. At the end of the day, he called me. He said, Monica, I'm not feeling good. I got an emergency doctor's appointment. I'm going to my doctor's appointment. He said, I'm going to call you when I get there. I said, Dad, okay. I said, make sure you call me. I said, because you don't sound right. He was like, well, Monica, I'm going to call you. Whoop, whoop, scooby -bop. That's how it went. So, nevertheless... I don't know what kind of lie he had been telling him. I don't know what he had been telling people for years that he was divorced from my mom. But we're going to get into that a little later on in this here story. Okay, in this here dumping. In this here, I'm pissed off. Oh, this scared me. That I'm pissed off. But at the end of the day, I'm going to leave that in here. But anywho, I have been dwelling on this all since yesterday. I've been dwelling on this for like two days. My mind has been focused on telling exactly what the fuck happened after my dad died, during my dad's death, at the funeral, after we left. So my dad got to his doctor's appointment. Something went wrong. My dad went unresponsive. So when my dad went unresponsive, my dad has siblings. His oldest niece which is my uncle's oldest child, calls me and tells me my dad is unresponsive. She getting ready to put him on a vent. No, you're not. No, you're not, is what I said. I said, that decision is not y'all's. That decision is my mother's. That's what she went in to tell me that my dad and my mom was divorced. No, they're not, is what I said. And I called the hospital and let them know that my mom was in full control of this situation. So at the end of the day, this is where the bullshit started at. This is where the rolling out of eyes and not talking to nobody, blocking people and all this other stuff came from. See, it wasn't just my mom's side that's dramatic. It's my dad's side too. They just do it low key. They don't do it out loud. They don't do it in your face. They sneak this. They sneak this. They've been doing it for years. And at the end of the day, I at this point, I don't give a damn if they like me or not. So, yep, y'all getting ready to get it. So, this, at this point, I called my mom. I called my mom and told her I was like, get ready to call back in 10 minutes. Have Margaret and Clyde on the phone when I called. My mother went to where Margaret and Clyde was, and then this is what happened. I told them, I said, he's unresponsible. But see, my dad wasn't that type. My dad went boldy. My dad went shelling. My dad did horseshoes. My dad did a lot of shit. He wouldn't have wanted nobody to turn him every two hours wiping his butt. No, he would not have that. So, yeah, I told them, I said, I don't, I don't want him living like that. Take him off the bed. I all, it all, it everybody, me and my mom and my two siblings that was left, we had to make the decision to take him off the vet. We took him off. My mom cleared the room and told them, I want to speak to my husband. And she talked to him. 
Right before he passed, she talked to him. Then they took him off the vent. It was over. We was getting ready to have to drive 14 hours. Me, my mother, my brother, and my sister from Dayton, Ohio, all the way to New Haven, Connecticut. That's where we had to do in the winter. In the, in the winter and doing the snow, all the shit. We had to get ready. through all this stuff. His girlfriend and my dad's side of the family was making decisions as far as the funeral, this, that, the third, this, that, and the third. Now, keep in mind, they had already got hit with the whammy that my mom and my dad was still married. But, okay. You know what I'm saying? Still nothing y'all can do. You know what I'm saying? Even if they wasn't married, I'm his oldest. I'm the second to the oldest child. This Any decision that had to do with my dad came from me. At the end of the day, that that's no. That's not going to hit. So, that had already mixed really badly with them and their ideas of what was going on with my dad. So... All I could think of was, okay, we had just went through this with Monique. Now we got to get ready to do this with my dad. Okay, we driving and all this other stuff. We get up there. Once we get up there, you can tell like the little snickety looks and the rolling of the eyes and all this other stuff. His girlfriend thinking we are going to take all his stuff. We wasn't. We didn't want nothing from him. We just wanted to make sure he got buried properly. That's it. That's all we wanted. It was no other thing. What well, We didn't come for nothing. We already had been raised. We already had our own. As we I think about it right now, as I think about it right now, there was never an offer for us to even stay at their house. It was never an offer to, for us to come to their house. We went to their house that night that we got there. Then we went back to the hotel because my, my brother made sure that we had somewhere to stay because we was only there for two days, like a day and two nights. But at the end of the day, we still had to make sure we had our own. They never even looked that up, looked after us even then. I should have thought about it then, but I didn't because I was mainly concerned about my dad and how he had passed it. This, that, and the third. How my heart was broken again. It wasn't broken as bad as my sister was, but it was still broke because that was still my dad. But I would think that the, his family would have reached out, but they didn't. I should, We should have noticed that, but we didn't because we were still torn up about my sister. So, therefore, when we got there, it was like sly little looks and stuff like this. We didn't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Because the way my mother raised us, we see, the messed up part for me was they were angry at us because we were there. Because his girlfriend was there with her kids. And then we, I heard her kids talk about how what good granddaddy they was, he was to their kids. And how he raised them. And how he spent time with them. And how he taught them certain shit. But my, my mother has a son too. He never spoke. Then when my brother had to get up there and speak. This is what. This is this right here. Okay. When my brother got up there and speak. He didn't even know what to say. My brother got the same identical name as my dad. And he didn't know what to say. Because my brother didn't know him. My dad was gone before my brother even knew who he really was. who he, How he was. How he operated. He didn't know this. But this woman's kids did. Now she was never disrespectful to us. Because we spoke to her. We actually had conversations with her. Me and Monique and Margaret. But at the end of the day. Clyde never did. Clyde wasn't on that. Clyde still ain't on that. So Clyde got up there and spoke. Boom. We think See I think the part that, that got me was. That after the funeral. When we went back to my aunt's house. My dad's best friend that was living up there with him, some man we don't even know, he just kept like nitpicking with my mom, kept nitpicking with my mom, kept nitpicking with my mom till my mom got up and grabbed him and choked the shit out of him. That's when I knew it was going to go bad. That's when I knew we had to pack our shit and go. That's when I knew it was time. So after this, you know, they, they, they discussed this stuff like his finances and all this other extra shit, but what they forgot was that he had a whole wife. So when it came to like his retirement pension and all that other shit, that went straight to my mother. There was no divorce decree. My mom sent in her marriage license and that was that. So I think what the problem was with them was that they was trying to help her out and not still not trying to look after us. So it, even when all this shit went on with my dad and to I tell my mom and my brother and my sister, let's go. We packed our shit up and we left. Never to say anything else. They they got his ashes. They had him cremated. They got his ashes and all that old extra stuff. And to this day, my dad is in her garage, his sister's garage. But see, that's not the part that pisses me off. That's not the part that's got me like this. This is not what was staying on my mind for the last two days. Even after that, I had talked to my aunt a couple of times or whatever the case may be. But she kept dwelling on it and dwelling on it and dwelling on it. But the part that behooved me, the part that behooved my entire soul was that she blocked us. What did you block us for? And then I kept thinking like, well, okay, well, let's go ahead and try to make it right. Let's go ahead and try to see why. But then I got to thinking, 
Why should I make it right? I'm your niece. Why should I make it right? Why should I make it any better for you? So I don't give a rat's ass if she blocked me or not. I don't give a fuck. I don't. Then I bring it up to my other aunt, like, to her sister, like, okay, I don't know why she did this. I don't know, Monica. I don't know. You know how she think? Because her and him was, like, real close. Okay, they was real close, but he wasn't close with us. That never bothered us, though. But I would think that after all these years, you would think that they would be grown about stuff. But they're not. They're not. And I left it at that. At first, I was thinking, like, go ahead and repair the relationship. Why? She don't want a relationship, so why should I want it? I don't give a damn about it. I'm not losing no sleep about it. As, as of right now, her by her first name, Lisa, by my first name, Monica, that's what we're going to keep it. Because at the end of the day, I'm not fighting for no more relationships. Because relationship fighting for me is over. So at this point in my life, I don't need it. I don't need her or nobody else. But see, this is not something that was new when my dad sat in the family. No. This is something that was always there. There was always not a relationship that needed to be repaired, I thought. All day I've been thinking about this. Since yesterday, I've been thinking about this. Since I made that video, I've been thinking about this. See, what people don't understand is because I'm touching on what's going on between me and my dad and his family and all this other extra shit. You all said, at the end of the day, what am I repairing? There was never no relationship there. The relationship never existed. We never was important to them. So why keep going out of my way? I'm not. Just like I found out that there was a group chat or a group page on Facebook about, you know, with, with my family and this and this, and we wasn't invited to that. It's fine. It's fine. I don't have to, I don't have to ask the Lord to forgive me for that. I don't have to ask the Lord to forgive me for that. They do. Only they got the answer to that. I don't have to. It's not my place. So I know my place with this. This reason why this is getting to me like it is is because these are grown individuals. And yet still, they still acting like kids. I called my aunt a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. I called her and asked her and said, hey, what was it? The reason why nobody really cared about us and this this she couldn't answer me that. And my, my aunt on my dad said this one... I could actually talk to her. And it wasn't her. It was the other one. And the other ones and the other ones. But every time I could turn on Facebook, they congratulating other, other nieces and nephews. They, they, they giving them props for stuff. And they, they own their pages, stuff like this. I just look. Because who am I? Who am I to them? I am nobody. I'm a stranger in the street. And that's how I'm going to leave it. So, yeah, this, this part of these stories right here is, like, irritating to me. It's, like, really irritating. Y'all got to forgive me for all the bad words and stuff like this. And I hope to have heaven I don't get in trouble. But if I do, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, what do they want? So, yeah, I wanted to come on here and I wanted to vent. This is a venting and a dumping at the same time because I just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Barbecues, family reunions, all this other extra shit. Kids being born, grandkids and all this other stuff. They couldn't pick out... Our kids, they could pick out our kids in a lineup. If they saw them on the street, they would never know who they were. Some of our kids got the same last name as my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my son included. Mm -hmm. But they would never know who he was. He left-handed like my dad. He talked like my dad. He dark-skinned just like my dad. Just like my sister was. But yet still, they don't know that. So yeah. I do have a problem with this series. I do. I can see it now. I can see it makes me angry. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of get that off my chest and let that go. But nevertheless, this is this is part of, you know what I'm saying, my healing process. So, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. So, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. And y'all know, hit the notification bell and all this other stuff because I got to get this off of me. I got to get this off of me in order for me to move forward. In order for me to move and move in. The right way, I got to get this out. So, yeah, it's lots more parts to this. And I hope y'all stay to watch it. But if y'all don't, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because this is not just for y'all. It's for me. See, because when, when, when parents do this to kids, this is the product right here. This is what you don't talk about. This is what people don't talk about. But I'm going to talk about it. So, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all in my next video. I promise Bye. you, this is not revenge. This is me healing. Stop taking the